Today is a great day because the Bible declares and we agree that this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God has truly been good to us and has allowed us yet another opportunity uh, to wake up another morning. Uh, and, and we should never take the small things for granted because sometimes if we really think about it, the small things to us are big things to somebody else. Um, you know, just the fact that we're able to wake up uh, and we know that we are awake. Uh, that's a blessing uh, because somebody else wishes that we were, that they were in our place. Uh, to be able to have a reasonable portion of height, health, and strength. Uh, that might be something that, that, that might be, you know, small for us, but for somebody else, you know, they wish that they had, you know, the, 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 the health uh, conditions that, that, that we have, that, but yet and still, you know, uh, uh, God has been good to all of us, uh, regardless of where we find ourselves in the scale of life. And we are just grateful for this opportunity to be here uh, to, to study the Word of God. Uh, today, we're going to continue uh, in our unit entitled uh, Talking About Justice, Law, and the History. And um, and today we're going to look at justice and adversity. Uh, we've been looking at that all month long. And uh, today we're going to look at Job. Job chapter 8. Job chapter 8. Um, Job chapter 8 is where we will be at today. Uh, thank you for those who have uh, who led us in, in in our devotion for today, we greatly do appreciate it. Um, and so today's topic is uh, Bill Dad misspeaks God's justice. Bill Dad misspeaks God's justice. Um, whenever we think about, uh, whenever I was look, looking over this title, uh, John chapter 3 verse 11 uh, came to my attention uh, about uh, that we testify to what we know and that we speak to what we see. Um, and so in other words, you know, sometimes our mouths can get us into trouble when we start making assumptions. Mm -hmm. um, and so we all know the story of Job and we know, uh, you know, uh, how Job got into this particular situation. We know uh, because we read chapter number one uh, that, that, that Job was recommended for this by the Lord uh, because the devil was, was roaming around and God said, well, have you considered my servant Job? And, and we know that that was the, the, the reasoning or the rationale behind everything that happened, that it was, you know, really the desire of Satan to get Job to change his testimony and to get Job to change his mind about what he knows about God. Um, but you see, Bildad, which is one of Job's friends, didn't read chapter one. Uh, he didn't know, you know, what took place in, in, the, in the meeting between God, his angels, where Satan showed up. And, and so then because he didn't know chapter one, he, he is in chapter number eight trying to give Job some advice. Um, and, and so it kind of goes to um, when we as, you know, because we have friends, we have loved ones, we have various ones that, that we are concerned about. Uh, whenever they are, you know, falling upon hard times, whenever they are, you know, uh, are going through a particular uh, situation or going through uh, a particular storm, you know, there are a few natural reactions, right? Yeah. Uh, what, what are some of those things? Right? I mean, it, it's your friend. I mean, you know, and you genuinely, you know, care and you're genuinely concerned about your friend. And so when you see your friend, you know, going through, what, what will you try to do? Try to help them. How, how will you try to help them? Any way you can. In, any way you can. Uh -huh. All right. And and so then, you know, and so sometimes, you know, 
you try to help them by telling them the truth, right? Yeah, tell the truth. You know, because you know, sometimes you, know, you might have a friend and they're in a situation and you know, you need to let them know a couple of things like, hey, you know, you know, uh, uh you, you aren't necessarily right in this thing now. Uh -huh. You know, you're not necessarily right in this thing. Yeah. You know, I mean that's a natural response, right? You know, uh, you know when you have a, when you have a friend, you know, and they're you know going through whatever, and you have to let them know, you know, hey, you know, you need to uh, uh, consider your ways. You need to consider, you know, this activity. You need to consider, you know, uh, 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 these associates that you're hanging up, uh, out with. You need to consider, you know, this this path that you're that you're going down. You need to consider all of these things. And so, so, and we do it because we're trying to do what? Yeah. We're trying to help. And so we're taking what we know, and then uh, we are, you know, trying to, you know, to provide a word of encouragement, a word of correction, a word of, of hope. We're, we're trying to provide all of these things because, you know, we are just trying to help. And so then when we look at uh, uh, Bildad, um, Bildad, in my opinion, he was trying to help. I don't think that he had anything against Job or that he was trying to mislead Job or try to try to condemn him, you know, in a way that that, you know, that that uh, that he knew to be wrong. Um, he was using what he knew uh, to provide uh, uh, encouragement and instructions uh, and, and and encouragement, if you will. You know, to, to Job, he was trying to get him to see the truth, so he thought. And so, what happens is, is that you have Bildad who made his assumption, and we'll talk about that, but then you have the truth. And so, what happens is, whenever we make assumptions, an assumption does not say that you have all the facts. Okay? And, and you know, and sometimes, you know, when we speak, we need to preface our whatever words with, okay, is this a assumption? Is this my opinion? Is this my fact? Uh, or, or, you know, or is this, you know, the Lord's conclusion? Okay, because many times we get in trouble because we have assumptions and we make assumptions. We, we make assumptions and then be based on our assumptions then we go around, you know, acting as though, you know, what we're saying is gospel, yeah. you know, but, but, you know, uh, you might have two and two, but sometimes two and two might not equal four. That's right. Or let me say it this way. You have two and two. Uh -huh. And so you say four, uh -huh. but what you didn't know that there was two more in front of it. And so you're trying to say two and two equals four, but really there was two, two, and two. That's right. And if you had that other two, you would have had a different what? Conclusion. And so, so, so we're going to talk about assumptions, and 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 we have to be careful how we make assumptions even against God. I'm telling you. know, and, and that's something we all have to be careful of because you know how many times have we tried to. You know, encourage somebody, uh, you know, with the word of God. How many times have we tried to encourage somebody with the, with the word of God? You know, we've tried to, you know, yeah. we've tried to help them. You know, how many times have we tried to help somebody to see the light yeah. with the word of God? Yeah. You know, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof leads to destruction. You're trying to help them by using the word of God. But sometimes, you know, what they're going through might not be what you think it is that they're going through. Right. You know, it, 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 it's kind of like, uh, you know, the internet, you know, the internet is great. The internet is awesome. Uh, but sometimes the internet can be deadly. Uh, because I don't know if y'all, I, I will, I speak for myself, you know, uh, or, or the news, you know, because, you know, one thing, the internet, like if you're not feeling well, you go on to the, you know, to, to, to whatever website or whatever, and you start diagnosing yourself. You start, mm, I got a, I got a cough and I got a this and I got a that and I got this and, and that and then and then and then you you pull it up online and then it says, Well, you got so and so. You know, you got cancer. It's like, wait a minute, you know, and so now you are oh Lord, I got oh Jesus. Because you you diagnosing yourself. 
Uh, but you know, you're not trained to diagnose medical, you know, conditions. You know, it, it's almost like you know when you uh, see commercials for medications uh, uh, on on TV, and you're like, mm, if you got this, that, this, and the other, you might need this. And you sit there, you don't know, diagnose yourself with some of anything, and you sit there, mm, you go to the doctor. Well, I think I need so and so because the commercial said that if I. <laughs> They say, you don't need that. <laughs> but what happens is, you know, is that, that we're going on, on, on part of the information. And so because we have part of the information, then uh, our conclusions are, are flawed. And so, um, and so then it kind of goes back to this whole idea of assumptions. Okay. Um, and so I, uh, uh, coming down, my wife was, you know, reading in the, in the commentary and, uh, and she had uh, came across the word uh, syllogism. And so uh, I'll kind of give you a little vocabulary. Uh, syllogism, S-Y-L-L-O-G-I-S-M, syllogism. And so uh, this is actually a, a, a philosophical uh, a concept. Um, and so what it says is, is that, um, I am presenting to you an argument where a conclusion is required by two premises. And so, in other words, I got two, I got two, and therefore, two and two has to equal four. Okay? And so, let's say, for instance, well, my car is not parked back there, but, you know, if, if my car was back there in the back, there's a space back there that says, pastor's Space. Uh -huh. All right. If that space says pastor's parking and I park a vehicle there, then you would assume that what? That's the pastor's vehicle. Why? Because of what the said, pastor's parking. And so then, you know, so then I would assume that, okay, well, nobody else would park in this space except for the pastor. Because it says right there, pastor's parking. Okay? There's a space right there that says musician's parking. Well, you would assume that if that space is occupied, then who is in it? Okay? So now, under most circumstances, the pastor wouldn't park in the musician's spot. And the musician wouldn't park in the pastor's spot. Right? Uh, why? Because I may, I have a premise. And with that premise... The premise says that here's a vehicle and here's a space. And the person parking in the space is the person who is permitted to park in the space. Okay, now, 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 I parked up here in the front. And so now, if somebody else were to come and park back there, would you, you know better, right? You know better. But the person who didn't know, would you say that, oh, the pastor spot is back there, he parked back there in the back. If you didn't know. You know, it, it, it was almost like, you know, when I um, uh, uh, started driving my dad's truck. And, you know, it was not a vehicle that, you know, that people were familiar with, uh, 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 with me having. Uh, and so then people would be like, who is that? Who is that? You know, uh, or if I were to park in the you know, well, even though I never parked in the pastor's parking spot since I've had that vehicle. But folks are like, what, what kind of vehicle is that? What kind of, you know? Uh, but, you know, but if a person would assume that, hey, you know, that if it's in the pastor's spot, it must be the pastor's vehicle. Or the vehicle that he's riding in, or the vehicle, whoever's driving him, or whatever. Okay? And so what it's saying is, is that that's my argument. And, 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 my, my, and the logic behind my argument is I got two things and these two things have always got to equal this. Okay? But now if somebody else were to park back there in the back, right. would you think that that was my vehicle? You know better now. If somebody were to park back there, would you think that that was my vehicle, my mother said, back at your car. Not me, why? Because I, I, I blurred that he drives a truck. There you go. He drives a truck. There you go. Yes, absolutely. And you put 
park it up the road. There you go. And so then that is, Back. yes, and, and that is, you know, uh, because if you didn't know, let's say if you were visiting the church, you would think that if I had Mother Simmons' uh, Toyota uh, a, a Camry, then that would be my car. But because we all know better, right. we know that, oh, pastor's car, pastor's truck is up here. Right. You know, and so then, and so then because you knew that piece of the puzzle, then you knew that that was not true. Okay, and that was the missing piece of information that Bill Dad didn't have. He did not have what went down in chapter number one. And so then that kind of lets us know, hey, you know, we need to be careful about how we make assumptions about things. Even we might have all the Bible in the world. We might have all of the education in the world. We might have all of the, 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 the facts in the world. But we have to make sure before we uh, before we say something, you know, uh, 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 we have to testify to what we know uh, to, to, be a, to be a fact. And so then here's the logic. The logic is only wicked people suffer. Job suffers. Therefore, what? Job is with you. That's what this outcome is. Yeah, I mean, because you would think, you know, only wicked people. But that's not true. There you go. <laughs> and so then you see there, and, and that word only is an absolute. Sure is. It, 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 and we have to be careful uh, uh, how we use absolutes. Uh, I was driving down, we were driving down uh, this morning, and uh, there was a, a commercial on for um, Smokey the Bear. Uh, and you know the, the Smokey the Bear's uh, uh, tagline is only you can prevent can... the virus. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so then, and, and, I, and I thought about that thing and I was like, I'm not the only one that can prevent virus virus. You can prevent virus virus. You can pre prevent virus but you get what I'm saying. I mean, now, I, I do have a tendency to over uh, go into things, but we have to be careful how we use those absolutes, right? Yeah. Uh, and, the, and the thing about it was that it was funny because they had even said, well, nine out of ten forest fires or wildfires are started by humans. Right. Well, guess what? There's still that one out of ten, that 10% of, of forests that are not started by human beings. Uh -huh. And so I'm not the only one that can prevent forest fires. All right? Just like certain individuals who have held political office in the past, we're not the only ones that can help America be great again. Okay. Enough of that. But that word only indicates an absolute. Only wicked people suffer. That's argument one. <clears throat> argument two, Job suffers. He's suffering. And so because only wicked people suffer and Job is suffering, then Job is wicked. That's what the put in. Yes. And so therefore, that is the premise of this entire lesson. Only wicked people suffer. And we will say right out from the outset, it's not true. No. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. That's so true. Sometimes people are the victims mm. of other people's cruel intentions. So true. So true. But and, and you know, and sometimes you know, we, we know we ask them, well, why did this happen to me? Why did this, you know? But then we cannot automatically assume, well, you know, the Lord is getting you back or something. You know, no, that's not always the case because sometimes things will happen to you that is not your fault. You had nothing to do with. Right. You just happen to be in the wrong place at right. the wrong time. Okay, so then now let's take a look. Now that we've said that, let's take a look at our lesson. Let's take a look at Job chapter eight, uh, verses one through four. And if someone has it, if they will read it. Does 
children have sinned against him, and he has cast them away for their transgressions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so then as we look at this first part, it's entitled Condemnation. And so Bildad is, is, is the, the friend that is now uh, 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 speaking. And to give a little bit of the, the context, um, you know, behind this, you know, uh, Job had three friends, uh, Bildad, Eliphaz, and Zophar. And, you know, they heard about what was going on with Job, and, you know, and they went to, you know, help to offer a word of encouragement to, you know, take a look at what was going on and see what they could do to, 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 to speak on, you know, or to, to do something about whatever it is uh, that is going on. And so Job was expressing, you know, some of the things that he was going through with his friends, which is something that is normal, you know, whenever you're going through and somebody, hey, you know, how's everything going? And, you know, you're sharing whatever. Yeah. All right. So now I want you to envision, to kind of picture this. Uh, picture yourself, you, you know, you have a uh, bill dad, uh, and, and he knows better, so he thinks. Because he knows that only wicked people suffer. Zo uh, uh, Job is suffering. And here's Job talking about, you know, how he hadn't done anything. He was, you know, perfect and upright in all of his ways. And, you know, and this, that, and the other. What would you say to Job? What would you say to Job? You did? Yeah. You, you know? Yeah, you, yeah, you know. You <laughs> Yeah, it, exactly. Uh, okay, and so, 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 if you were to summarize, you know, uh, uh, verse number two, that's what he said. Now, how long are you gonna keep this game up? Now, you did something. Something is going on. Cause now you're not about to sit here and tell me that you're going through all of this that you're going through. You lost all this stuff that you have lost, and you ain't done nothing. It's a double negative. But still, you ain't done nothing. You did something. Mother Simpson said, go back and look again. Go, go back and check something out. Because, you know, now you're not about to sit here. And, and how many of us have had to, you know, to, 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 to use that line, you know, on somebody? Now, you, what you're not about to do, you're not about to sit here and tell me that so and so and so and so. All right, my wife said, children. You know, you're not about to sit here and tell me that, you know, that that, that you did so and so and so and so, or you didn't do so and so and so. Okay? Right. So, so we've used that line before in the past, right? And so that's what Bildad is saying to Job in verse number two. It's like, now look, how long are you going to keep up this charade? I ain't buying it. And he wasn't. He, he wasn't buying it. And then he went back and said, well, does God pervert Justice, or does the Almighty God, uh, uh, does the Almighty God pervert what is right? And so then, when we use that word "pervert," it means to bend, to falsify, to make crooked. And so then, what Bill Dad was saying, Job, all right, how long are we going to keep this game up? Are you trying to tell me that God, who is a just God, God who is a righteous God, God who is a, a God who does everything right, a holy God, are you going to tell me that God perverts justice? That he's doing all this stuff unfairly to you? That he's allowing all this unfair stuff to happen to you? Okay, why would Bill Dad say that? There you go. Because what happens? Who suffers? The unrighteous. The un and only the unrighteous. That's, that, that's what Bill Dad. Only. Those people suffer. Mm -hmm. And so anybody who suffers has got to be. You got to be. You got to be doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. How many of us have, been, have looked in, in, in our lives at some time, at some oh. point? And we looked at certain things that have happened to us or certain things that happened, you know, within our circles. And we're like, wow, you know, what did I do wrong? What did I, where did I mess up? Where did I, you know, do whatever? Wow. But then, you know, sometimes it's not something that you did. Sometimes it could be something that the enemy is doing. Jesus. Okay. And so then we have to know and to have the discernment to know the difference. Yes. Okay, we have to know uh, 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 the, the difference. 
Okay. Um, and so then he goes on to say, uh, well, uh, Job, not only must have you must you have done something wrong, but you know your children did something wrong. That, that's the next part. And you know, and I, and I can't even imagine how Job felt like, okay, now look, now it's enough that you're talking about me. Now it's enough that you're talking about me. Now, now watch your mouth now. Now watch your mouth. Now. But he goes on to say, well, your children, when your children sin against him, and you know that they did. Now they did. Uh, he gave them over to the to the penalty of their sin. Look at him making these assumptions. Right. Okay. But remember, you know, part of Job being perfect and upright in all of his ways was not that he never did anything wrong or that his children never did anything wrong, but he was perfect in keeping the law, meaning that whenever something happened, he was perfect and upright and making sure that he uh, made appropriate sacrifice to the Lord. And he made sacrifices to God on behalf of his children as well. Yeah, you know, uh, and, uh, and so then, because he knew what they were doing. He, he knew what they were doing. And yes, that works and it still works. You know, uh, uh, you know, usually on Mother's Day, we know we are somewhere around that. We sing that song, Somebody Pray For Me. Had me on their mind. Mm -hmm. Took a little time to pray for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so I'm so glad they prayed for me. And then they, you know, they, and then we're going to say, my mother prayed for me. My father prayed for me. The preacher prayed for me. The deacon prayed for me. Okay. Well, many of us, uh, well, not many, all of us, at some point, live on the prayers of somebody else. So true. So true. You know, and, and, and there are some of us, we're still living on the prayers wow, yeah. of folks that are dead and gone. Wow, most of the time, it's your parents. And most of the time, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, uh, parents, grandparents, you know, before oh, they went on to, to meet yeah. with the Lord, they said, God, please keep, 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 God, look out for my children. Wow. You know, look, look out for my grandchildren. Look out for, you know, uh, help them to come into a, a relationship with you. Help them to give their life to you. You know, many times, many of us really live it off of their prayers. Uh, you know, uh, and I tell you all the time, you know, this is this is Black History Month. I know for a fact that I'm living off of the prayers of people who I never met. You know, I ne I have never met either one of my great grandparents, have, and I have one of my grandparents I've never met. Uh, but I believe that I'm living off of their prayers. All of my grandparents now have gone on to be with the Lord. And I believe that I'm still living off of their prayers. Even though I don't know how to pray for myself. Yeah. But I still believe I'm living off of their prayers. Oh. And so then, yes, there will be a time where, you know, where a person will have to acknowledge, you know, God for themselves. And come to and have a relationship with God for themselves. There will come that time in everybody's life. Okay. Uh, but there is still the ministry of intercession that says, hey, you know, I can still pray for my child. I can still pray for, you know, this person. I can still pray for that person that has gone, that has gone astray. I can pray for that person and through the prayers of the righteous. Yes. And so then, you know, I believe and I'm crazy enough to believe. That, you know, when we have different situations that happen, you know, in our lives, different situations that happen in the lives of our family, different situations that happen to people in the church, I believe that prayer still works and that intercessory prayer still works. Okay. And so, yes, you know, there must be a time where we have to answer for whatever, but we have to be careful how we speak for God. We have to be careful how we speak for God. Uh, because, you know, we have to be careful when we say, well, somebody got what they deserve. How do you know that? Yeah. How do you know that? Wow. Because the God that we serve, God's got a way. God's got a way of, of, of giving people exactly what they deserve. God has a way of, uh, of, of uh, and that's what we call God's mercy. Right. You deserve this. But then God's mercy says, 
I'm not going to let you die in this. And, and you see, and, and there's some things that I believe in God for even right now. There's some people that I believe in God for even right now. That, you know, that the enemy is trying to come in and to steal, kill, and destroy. But I believe that, I, that we serve a, a merciful God. And that our God is so full of mercy that God will give uh, our first people another chance. God will give them another chance. Uh, and another chance. And then after that chance, God will give them another chance. Okay? Um, all right. So then now let's, let's keep going. Um, uh, there is a part here um, uh, that I want to read from the commentary. It says, ultimately, it was not up to Job or Bildad to explain Job's hardship and suffering. Instead, their interaction highlights that a silent presence often uh, can provide the best comfort to those who are suffering. Bildad could have better served his friend through the comfort of silence and presence. As he started out doing in Job chapter 2. Sometimes the best thing that we can do. Yeah. Sometimes the best thing that we can do. Is be there and say nothing. Talk to the Lord about it. And, and speak when God says speak. Because sometimes we can do more harm than good. What if Job's faith was not as strong as it was? You know, and, and we have weak-minded people all around us. You know, and, and, and sometimes, you know, you can, you can make a situation worse. You can turn somebody away from God because of what you're trying to say about God. You know, what if Job's faith was weak? And then you, you did something. You did something. I don't know what you were doing. Was it go back and look again? You know, go go back and look again. You did. What if Job's faith was not, you know, that strong? Job was like, well, you know what? I just give up. I just give up. Well, whatever it is, I, I, you know. But I thank God that His faith was not as as weak as you know uh, as as it could have been. All right. So then we talk. So now we see here. The, the blessing or what could have happened with the ministry of silence, the ministry of just being present. And sometimes, you know, even when we're, you know, uh, I think one of the other ways that we can learn how to be silent is uh, whenever somebody has a loss in their family, you know, a death. And, you know, and, and usually there, and especially if that person, you know, if they weren't, you know, all the way with the Lord. I don't know if there's such a thing. You get you get what I'm saying. You know, one of them was that they joined the church at an early age and they ain't never been seen uh, 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 since in the church. Uh, sometimes the best thing that we can do, or somebody that has died over some questionable circumstances. You know, a person that might have died by violence. Uh, uh, you know, a person that might have been in the streets. You know, yeah, person that died by suicide. That, that's one of those, and that's one, and, and speaking of, that's one thing that God had to get me about. Because now I, I grew up, I grew up, and that was what I was taught, and that was what I believed. Uh, I I believed it because that was what I was taught. That if you died by suicide, you were going to hell, and that that was what we were taught. They said because you couldn't repent after yeah. the grave, yeah. and so then you know and. Uh, and, 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 and let's say it was two things that could keep you uh, from 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 getting into heaven. Uh, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit and commit suicide, and, and that was what I believed, and that was what I went around saying. And, and one day the Lord said, "Who died and made you God?" Oh, and I said, mm, mm. "Because I had, somebody had asked me the question. I, I was at work, and I said, well, you know, if you die by suicide, you're going to hell. I mean, you can't, you know. And, and, I, and I, I firmly meant that. Because that was what I was taught. Um, and, and, and unfortunately, it was a situation, wasn't even a good six months afterwards, where somebody that was connected to, you know, somebody's kid at work died by suicide. And, and 
And, and the Lord said, well, who died? Who, who died and made you, put you in charge of who goes into heaven and who goes into hell? And I had to stop. I had to stop right there. And I said, you know what? It, it, and it was actually one of the same people who asked me months ago. They were like, well, well what, 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 you know, you know, uh, or, uh, you know, is my child going to hell? And, oh. and because, I mean, because she, you know, they had asked me this question before this even happened. Oh. And, and like I said, and, and throughout this experience, the Lord had already dealt with me so that when I went to go visit, uh, somebody else was saying, well, God's not going to hold it against him. It's going to be all. I said, you know what? We're going to let God speak for himself. That's it. It's up to him. He has the last say. I said, we're going to let God speak for himself. That's right. Because we don't, I don't know. I, 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 I don't. And sometimes that's the, that's the most blessed thing that you can say. I don't know. I don't know. You know, uh, uh, all I know is that whatever was going on with this young person, he had struggled with whatever for a long time. And the only thing that I do know, if I don't know anything else, is that whatever it is that he's dealing with, he's not dealing with it anymore. That's all I know. That's all I know. That's all we do. I don't know if he uh, asked the Lord to forgive him. I don't know, you know, that if, you know, if, 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 I don't know. I don't know the circumstances. I wasn't there. I'm not in the position to judge another person and the things that they go through because guess what? We all do some things when we're going through. You know, we all, you know, express, you know, anxiety and depression and all this stuff. We all, we don't know. Uh, and so sometimes, you know, and, and that was what I told her. I said, you know what? Let's put this in the hands of God. Because when it's all said and done, God knows. Yes, he does. God knows. And but by the grace of God, any one of us could have been in that situation. Any one of us could have been in that situation. And if it were me, in that situation. I don't need anybody to judge me. What I need you to do is pray for me. Okay. Our loved ones that are going through and having suicidal thoughts or whatever. They don't need our judgment. They don't need. Mm, you need to get saved. You need the Holy Ghost. You don't know what they got. What they need is somebody to say, you know what? If you ever want to talk. And y'all know how sometimes we do. And I'm in the lesson, but I'm out, I'm out of it too. Because we say, well, anytime that you want to talk, just come in and talk. And, 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 and they come and talk to you. And then the next thing you do, you don't judge them. Now, mm, now that, that's what you get. Mess around with that girl. That's why she doesn't she, that, you know, mess around with that man. And now he done got you all acting crazy. They don't need that. What they need is, come on, let's. I understand that, you know, whatever is going on, I want to help you. And sometimes, you know, when it comes to that type of thing, sometimes the best help that you can get is to say, well, hey, let's go talk to somebody else. Does that make sense? Sometimes the best thing that you can do is to say, hey, let's go talk to, uh, uh, counselor or therapist or whatever. You know, um, because we never know what somebody goes through. And and and, 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 and that was one of the things that God had told me. He, he said, I, I didn't put you in charge of that. I didn't put you in charge of who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. Okay. Because, because and then I had to think about it because I said, well, you know what, God? Because at any time, God can take my life and I'd be you know, I can bust hell wide open too. Um, but sometimes the judge not. Lest you be judged. That's right. The same judge you put on somebody else. It, it does, if we're busy condemning somebody else, you might not have done that. 
But you did something. All of life is in sin. Thank you. Since, since, when, since when did God categorize sin? Mm. You might not be a drinker. You might not be a, 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 a person who is out on the streets or whatever. But you know, if you tell a, a, a lie, a white lie, guess what? That's still, that's still a sin just like if you kill somebody. Still time on the job. That's a sin. That speeding that I was doing trying to get to church today. <laughs> but it was. I knew that sign said 60 miles an hour. <laughs> I, I, I used to, I used to uh, all right, and I'm going to get back to this. I used to pray. I said, Lord, forgive me for all the sins that I committed on the highway trying to get here. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at verses 5 through 7. Uh, Much natural verse in the Bible. But if you will seek God earnestly and plead with the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, even now, he will rouse himself on your behalf and restore you to your prosperous state. Your beginnings will seem humble, so prosperous your future will be. Ask the former generation... No, that was it. Five, five through seven. All right. So now the conversation switches from condemnation to exhortation. All right. So I kind of talk about how we do that as well. You know, we, we try. Well, now if you would, you know, we, we talk to folks. Well, if you would just give your life to God, God will help you. You know, if you would just turn it over to God. Y'all know how we do. He'll work it out. That much is true. It is true. But sometimes we can say it on the wrong premise. You're right. Okay? And so then look at look at uh, verse number five. It says that if you will seek God earnestly and plead with the Almighty. And so Bill that was saying, hey, you need to get back to God. You need to be born again. And, it, and sometimes that, 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 that'll make you mad, right? Somebody tell you you need to be saved. I am saying. Question your salvation. Yeah, get you to question your salvation. Like, <laughs> um, all right, take a look at the, the, at, 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 the seven, at, at the next verse, at the sixth verse. So, so it says, well, if you would seek God, if you would plead earnestly with God, then what would God do? Is it if you are pure and upright, then what will God do? He restore. He will restore, yes. What was wrong with these arguments? It's not the fact that it wasn't true. It wasn't complete. It was not complete. He didn't know the other half. He didn't know. know that's right. He didn't know the other side of the story. He didn't know the other side. He didn't have chapter one. And, and, and the thing about it is, even though he was around at chapter number two, he didn't know chapter number one. And sometimes when we're dealing with other people, we have to be careful because if we don't know what their chapter one is, how can we insert ourselves in their chapter two? And, 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 and the sad part about it is that even Job didn't know Job's chapter number one. He didn't know his chapter number one. Uh, but God did. God did. And so then a better way to say it is, okay, so now we know what we know, okay? So, so let's say Bill Dad, only wicked people suffer. Job is suffering. But Job is saying that he's not wicked. Job is saying that he had done no wrong or whatever. Okay? What are some things that Bill Dad could have said? Oh, what could he have done? We said it before. Let's pray about it. Okay, what else can Bill Dad have done? Well, he could have kept silent. He could have kept silent. He, he had the right to remain silent. Because what we don't want to happen is what we say to cause more harm than it does good. Okay? Um, and so then, 
And so then these things, although they might be true, they did not necessarily apply to this particular uh, 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 situation. Okay. Um, all right. Then let's take a look at uh, the last three verses, verses 8 through 10. And I'll read those uh, as we conclude. Oh, actually, I got some more verses. Let's, let's, let's go to verse number 20. Um, Surely God does not reject one who is blameless or strengthens the hands of evildoers. He will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Your enemies will be clothed in shame and the tents of the wicked will be no more. Okay, a couple things here. Remember, um, when we look at this, The assumptions were that only wicked people suffer. Job is suffering, and therefore Job is wicked. Okay, the, the commentary, the Sunday School book breaks it down like this. It says that there is um, a, a major premise, a specific premise, and a conclusion. So major premise is God does not cast away those who are perfect. God has cast Job away as evidenced by Job's struggles. Job, conclusion, Job is not perfect and therefore needs to repent. And so we see now that we have the full picture that this was not necessarily true. Job went through these things. And in life, we go through things. And sometimes the things that we go through in life are not fair. They're just not. But that does not mean that, you know, that there is some, you know, God is trying to get you back, okay, uh, uh, for something that you did, okay? Uh, but so, that, so then we have to be careful, you know, even as we are, 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 are witnessing and speaking to different people, uh, encouraging them that, you know, hey, you know, everything that happens that's not good does not mean that it's punishment for something. Okay? Uh, conclusion. Being present to someone in the midst of a tragedy presents unique challenges. In an effort to explain the suffering, we may put too much pressure on ourselves to comfort in a wrong way. Platitudes will likely overstep the bounds of what is helpful. At best, our words might be little more than hollow cliches. At worst, they might cause further harm. Bill Dad's counterproductive interaction with Job reminds us of the best ministry we might offer, the ministry of presence in the midst of difficult seasons. At first, Job's friends approached him in this manner, but their silent presence changed to unhelpful arguments. They were quick to suppose that wickedness was the primary reason for Job's suffering. However, Bildad's logic did not account for the entire story of how God works. In reality, wicked individuals might experience blessing, while righteous individuals might experience suffering. Unbeknownst to everyone present, Job's suffering was an example of the latter. When others experience suffering, our natural response is to be with them. To draw near, cry, and share in grief is appropriate as an appropriate course of action to comfort the sufferer. Conjecture on God's behalf, meaning trying to speak for God, is unwise and unnecessary. Sitting silently with a grieving person yes. often provides the yes. best yes. support. Yes. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for this time that we've had to share in your word. Thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, and most of all, God, what we have felt within our hearts. Help us, God, that we might not only be hearers of your word, but doers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. All right, we are dismissed. Good morning to everyone. Hello.